Welcome to today's video where we explore one of the most exciting concepts in mathematics, finding a general formula for prime numbers. Yes, that's right, a formula where you can input a number and the formula will give you a prime number. This might sound too good to be true, but in today's video, I will guide you through this incredible idea step by step. The video is divided into four easy to follow chapters, so you'll be able to understand the process clearly. By the end, you'll be able to apply this formula and see prime numbers in a whole new way. Let's begin. Chapter number one, what are prime numbers? Before we dive into the formula, let's quickly review what prime numbers are. A prime number is a natural number greater than one that has exactly two divisors, one in itself. Let's break this down. If you have a number, let's call it X, and it belongs to the set of prime numbers, it will only have two divisors, one and the number itself. For example, the number one is not a prime number because it has only one divisor, which is itself. The number two, however, is a prime because it has two divisors, one and two. Similarly, the number three is a prime number because its only divisors are one and three. Now let's think about the number four. Four is not a prime number because it has three divisors, one, two, and four and so on. All prime numbers share this property. They have exactly two divisors. It's important to know this as we move forward into the next chapter. Chapter number two, the prime counting function. Now that we understand prime numbers, let's talk about the prime counting function. This function, denoted as pi of x, counts how many prime numbers are less than or equal to a given number x. Here's an interesting fact. The prime counting function can be roughly approximated using the formula x over the natural logarithm of x. This formula tells us how many primes exist up to any number x, though it's an approximation rather than an exact count. For example, let's take the number 11. When we apply the formula, we find that pi of 11 equals five, meaning there are five prime numbers less than or equal to 11. Those primes are two, three, five, seven, and 11. Similarly, if we take the number 100, we find that there are 25 prime numbers less than or equal to 100. So, pi of 100 equals 25. This gives us an idea of how prime numbers are distributed across the number line. With this knowledge in hand, let's move on to the next chapter where we'll introduce a new remainder notation to help simplify our prime number formula. Chapter number three, remainder notation. In this chapter, I'll introduce a new type of remainder notation that will make understanding the prime number formula easier. While you can still use the traditional notation, this new notation will help break things down in a simpler way. You're probably familiar with Euclidean division, which is a way of dividing one number by another. In traditional Euclidean division, when you divide a by b, you get a quotient q and a remainder r. This can be written as a over b equals q plus r over b, or simply as a equals b times q plus r. Now let's simplify this by introducing a new notation. We'll represent the remainder as r of a, b equals r. Using this notation, Euclidean division becomes a equals b times q plus r of a, b. Let's try an example. Suppose we need to find the remainder when dividing nine by two. Using Euclidean division, we can write nine divided by two as four plus one over two, or nine equals two times four plus one. So the remainder, r of nine and two equals one. Let's try another example, r of four and five, two. If we divide four by two, we get two with no remainder. So r of four and two equals zero. We can also apply this notation to sets. If we have a set of numbers and a number b divides all elements of that set with the same remainder, we can say that the remainder of the set in b is equal to that remainder. For instance, if we take the set of even numbers and divide them by two, we always get a remainder of zero. Therefore, we can say that the remainder of the even number is zero set and two is zero. Now that we understand this new remainder notation, let's move on to the final chapter, where we will introduce the general formula for prime numbers. Chapter number four, the general formula of prime numbers. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. The general formula for prime numbers. I'm about to present the formula that allows you to input a number and find the corresponding prime number. The formula is as follows, p sub pi of m equals m 
if R of set S and M equals zero, where M is any natural number. Let's break this down further. First, S sub M represents the set of all combinations of M from one to the floor of M over two. Next, we use the combination formula to calculate M choose K. This is equal to M factorial divided by M minus K factorial times K factorial. Now let's try an example to see how this formula works. Let's start with M equals two. For M equals two, the floor of two over two equals one. So S sub two equals one, two is two choose one, which equals two. Since R of S two and two equals two zero, as two divides two completely, the prime number is two. This is our first prime number. Let's try another example, M equals three. The floor of three over two equals one. So S3 will have one element, three choose one, which equals three. Using the formula, we find that P of pi of three equals three, as R of S3 and three equals three zero. Therefore, three is the second prime number. Let's continue with M equals nine. The floor of nine over two equals four, so S9 will have four elements from nine choose one to four. We apply the combination formula and find that none of the elements are divisible by nine, so we don't proceed further. Finally, let's test with M equals 11. The floor of 11 over two equals five, so S11 will have five elements from 11 choose one to five. Applying the formula, we find that R of S11 and 11 equals zero, so P of pi of 11 equals zero 11. This is the fifth prime number. As you can see, this formula works for all numbers, whether they are even or odd. You can use it to explore and discover more prime numbers, it simplifies the process of finding primes, making it faster and more efficient. This is the first ever general formula for prime numbers, and I encourage you to try it out for yourself. If you find any mistakes or have suggestions for improvements, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more mathematical insights.